Expand your vocabulary with our core 2,000 words ebook. It's free and packed with essential expressions that you'll use on a daily basis. Start building your vocabulary today. Click the link in the description below to download your free Danish ebook before it's gone. Hi, jeg hedder Louise. Hi everybody, I'm Louise. Welcome to DanishClass101.com's Dansk på tre minutter. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Danish. In the last lesson you learned the phrase Undskyld, kan du tale engelsk? Which means, excuse me, do you speak English? We mentioned the word Undskyld, which means excuse me in Danish. In this lesson you learn how to use Undskyld and other words when you're apologizing in Danish. The common way to say excuse me is undskyld, undskyld. You can use undskyld in formal situations, such as when you're ordering something in bars or restaurants. For example, undskyld, en kaffe tak. Excuse me, a coffee please. You can also use it when you're asking a question. Undskyld, hvor er Tivoli? Excuse me, where is Tivoli? You can also use undskyld to apologize for an action. Undskyld. Sometimes you'll hear Danes say sorry, which is a loan word from English, and it's often used as a quick apology amongst friends. Sorry. Another common apology is beklager, which means the same thing when you want to excuse yourself for an action. Beklager. Beklager. All of these phrases can be used for either excuse me or I'm sorry, but if you really want to apologize for something, it might be better to use a slightly longer phrase. That phrase is undskyld, det er virkelig ked af, and it means excuse me, I'm really sorry, and it can be used in both formal and informal situations. Undskyld, det er jeg virkelig ked af. First we have the familiar undskyld. Next, we insert the Danish pronoun for that, which is de. Then er, which means am. This is followed by the pronoun jeg, which means I. Then we have virkelig, which means really. And finally, we have the phrase kill a, meaning sorry about. Undskyld, det er virkelig kill a. Now it's time for Louise's insights. If you accidentally bump into someone in Denmark, you might not get any response. But to be polite, you should either say undskyld or beklager. It is also common to use the exclamation oh before apologizing. Oh, undskyld. Are you able to count in Danish? In the next lesson, you'll learn the numbers in Danish from 1 to 10. I'll be waiting for you in the next Dansk på 3 minutter lesson. Vi ses næste gang! Hi, jeg hedder Louise. Hey everybody, I'm Louise. Welcome to DanishClass101.com's Dansk på 3 minutter. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Danish. In the last lesson, you learned some words to use when you're apologizing in Danish, including undskyld and beklager. In this lesson, you're going to learn numbers in Danish. Yes, numbers. Tell from 1 to 10. And you're going to learn them in only 3 minutes. 3 minutter. Are you ready? Let's start. En, en. To, to. Tre, tre. Fire, fire. Fem, fem. Seks, seks. Syv, syv. Otte, otte. Ni, ni, ti, ti. Okay, now repeat after me. I'll say the numbers and give you time to repeat each one. En, to, tre, fire, fem, seks, syv, 
8 9 10 Great job. What is before 1? Do you know? It's 0. 0. You don't have any more excuses. You can give your friends your cell phone number in Danish. Let's try together. We'll use the phrase mit nummer er, which means my number is mit nummer er. Mit nummer er 2 8 1 3 5 8 7 4. Can you read it by yourself? Perfect. Now it's time for Louise's insights. When you're just starting out, it's okay to give your phone number in this way. But in Denmark, you more commonly hear it grouped into sets of two, like this, 28, 13, 58, 74. But you need one more lesson until you're ready to do that. Do you know the Danish word for 100? Here's a hint. It's very similar to the English word. In the next Dansk på 3 minutter lesson, you're going to learn the numbers from 11 to 100 in Danish. Your task now is to practice the numbers we studied in this lesson. Vi ses næste gang! Learning to carry a conversation is vital to mastery of any language. Even beginners can quickly learn conversational language well enough to carry on real conversations with native speakers. Of course, beginners won't be able to carry a conversation the same way they could in their native language. But just knowing a few tips, like which questions to ask to keep a conversation going, are all you need to speak and interact with real native speakers. Before we get to specific suggestions, let's first take a closer look at how having real conversations in your target language is so vital to your mastery of the language. Communicating with other people is the very point of language, and conversation comes easily in our native tongue. For beginners, or anyone learning a new language, Conversations aren't easy at all, and even simple greetings can be intimidating and awkward. Nothing kills a conversation faster than long periods of awkward silence, so you need practice and specific strategies to avoid them. When you know what to say to keep a conversation going, communication becomes much easier, and you make a better impression on your listener. Nothing will help you learn to speak a language faster and truly master the language than having real conversations with native speakers. Conversations quickly expose you to slang, cultural expressions, and vocabulary that force you to absorb and assimilate information faster than any educational setting. And that's a great thing. But how can you possibly have real conversations with real people if you're just starting out? Here are three proven methods that even beginners can quickly use to learn conversational language to make a great impression and avoid awkward silences. First, ask questions to keep a conversation going. For beginners and even more advanced speakers, the key is to ask questions to keep a conversation going. Of course, they can't be just random questions or else you may confuse the listener. But by memorizing a few key questions and the appropriate time to use them, you can easily carry a conversation with minimal vocabulary or experience. And remember, the more conversations you have, the quicker you will learn and master the language. Second, learn core vocabulary terms as quickly as possible. You don't need to memorize thousands of words to learn conversational language. In fact, with just a couple hundred words, you could have a very basic conversation. And by learning maybe 1,000 to 2,000 words, you could carry a conversation with a native speaker about current events, order in restaurants, and even get directions. To help you get started with this, check out our 2,000 common words, also known as our core list. These 2,000 words are all you need to learn to speak fluently and carry a conversation with a native speaker. Third, study video or audio lessons that you can play and replay again and again. If you want to know how to carry on a conversation, then you need exposure to native speakers, and the more, the better. Studying video or audio lessons is ideal because they provide contextualized learning in your native language, and you can play them again and again until you achieve mastery. Our instructors have created more than 2,500 video and audio lessons that you can play over and over. And the best part is, they don't just teach you vocabulary and grammar. They are designed to help you learn to speak and teach you practical everyday topics like shopping, 
ordering, and more. Although it may seem intimidating for a beginner, the truth is that it's very easy to learn conversational language. Just learn a few core vocabulary terms and which questions to ask to keep a conversation going. Our language learning program has the world's largest online collection of video and audio lessons by real instructors, plus tons of advanced tools to help you learn to speak and carry on a conversation quickly. Just a little practice and exposure to real conversations or lessons is all it really takes. So, if you're ready to finally learn a new language the fast, fun, and easy way, sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Signing up takes less than 30 seconds, and you'll start speaking from your very first lesson. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Hi, jeg hedder Louise. Hi everybody, I'm Louise. Welcome to DanishClass101.com's Dansk på 3 minutter. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Danish. In the last lesson you learned the numbers from 1 to 10. Have you forgotten? Here, I tell you again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And now let's continue from 11. 11, 11, 12, 12, 13, 13, 14, 14, 15, 15, 16, 16, 17, 17, 18, 18, 19, 19. And finally, we have 20. 20. Okay, now repeat after me. I'll say the numbers and give you time to repeat each one. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. These numbers may seem harder to remember, but a lot of them are just a single number you learned from the last lesson with 10 added to the end. The rest you will have to memorize. Let's not stop at 20. Counting to 100 is super easy once you know the system. Now I'll give you the tens. 30, 30, 40, 50, 50, 60, 60, 70, 70, 80, 80, 90, 90, 100, 100. You will have to memorize most of these numbers as there are no tricks in the book that will make memorizing them easier. 30 and 40 are conjugations of 3 or 4, but memorizing the tens above 40 might take some practice. As for 100, it sounds a lot like the English word 100 and shouldn't be that hard to remember. The last thing to learn in this lesson is how to form compound numbers above 20. This is also super easy. Take the numbers you learned in the previous lesson and simply add O, which means and, and then the tens. Let's try it out. How would you say 56 in Danish? Let's take it step by step. Six is six, add O, and then add 50, 50. Six O 50. It's done. Isn't it easy? Let's make another number, for instance, 98. Take 8, 8, add O, and then add 90, 90. 8 over 90. Now it's time for Louise's insights. To count higher than 100 should be no problem at all. Just take the 100, 100, and add an O, and whatever compound 10 after that. For example, 135. 
135. 135. After only two lessons, you are now able to count to 100 in Danish. In the next lesson, we are going to put your number knowledge to use. Do you have all the language skills you need to go shopping in Denmark? If not, I'll be waiting for you in the next Dansk på 3 minutter lesson. Vi ses næste gang. Hej, jeg hedder Louise. Hi everybody, I'm Louise. Welcome to DanishClass101.com's Dansk på 3 minutter. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Danish. In the last lesson, you learned how to count in Danish. I hope you spent some time practicing the numbers because they will come in handy for this lesson. You're going to learn how to go shopping in Denmark. Before we go, you need to know how to say how much is it. Hvor meget koster den? Hvor meget koster den? Okay, are you ready to go shopping in Denmark? Let's go. You see something you like and want to ask a shopkeeper how much it costs. The first thing to say is undskyld. Do you remember what that means? Excuse me. Undskyld, hvor meget koster den? Undskyld, hvor meget koster den? Now in Danish, the object that you point at is either den or de. There are no rules for when to use den or de, so you'll have to learn them by heart. But don't worry, Danes will understand you even if you use the wrong one, so just go ahead and try. Undskyld, hvor meget koster den? Undskyld, hvor meget koster det? There's one more pronoun you can use when pointing at a bundle of things you want. The pronoun de. Undskyld, hvor meget koster de? At this point, the shop clerk can answer by saying den koster, de koster, or de koster. For example, den koster 55 kroner, de koster 55 kroner, or de koster 55 kroner. What number is 55? <laughs> yeah, it's 55. So this means it cost 55 kroner. Now it's time for Louise's insights. The pronoun you will use most often is det, because not only is it used to ask prices of some objects, but also services, like if you want to get a haircut. So get used to asking with this. Hvor meget koster det? Hvor meget koster det? At this point, can you count corner in Danish? We're going to learn how to do this and much more in the next lesson. I'll be waiting for you in the next Dansk på 3 minutter lesson. Vi ses næste gang. Want to master grammar so you can speak properly, express yourself better and understand more? In this video, I'll show you how to master grammar with our lessons and learning program. Let's begin. Number one. Listen to the lesson conversations and explanations. In every lesson, you learn a conversation. Then, our teachers break down every word and grammar rule. So you're actually learning grammar rules in the context of conversations, and you can easily see how they're used. Once you're done, review the conversation again and again to remember what you've learned. Number two, read the bonus explanations and tutorials. With the lesson notes, you get extra grammar explanations and examples that are not presented in the lesson. After you're done with a lesson, read the lesson notes for extra review. You can even save them as PDFs so that you can access them anytime. Number three, leave a comment on the lesson. Once you've learned a grammar point, be sure to use it. Leave a comment in the comment section. Write some example sentences for practice. Our teachers will review your comment and give you feedback. Number four, unlock even more grammar lessons. If you want to find all of the grammar lessons available, visit our lesson library. Under category, choose Grammar. You'll get all of the pathways and lessons dedicated to helping you learn and master sentence patterns and grammar points. So, if you're ready to finally learn a new language the fast, fun, and easy way, sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Signing up takes less than 30 seconds, and you'll start speaking from your very first lesson. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye!
Hej, jeg hedder Louise. Hej, everybody. I'm Louise. Welcome to DanishClass101.com's Dansk på 3 minutter. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Danish. In the last lesson, you learned how to be grateful to people by saying tak. In this lesson, you learn some of the most common greetings used in Denmark. Er I klar? Are you ready? Så lad os begynde. So let's start. The most used informal greeting is hi. Hi. Hi means hi. You can use it when you meet people and it can be used with anyone. But it isn't the only way to greet someone. We also have good day. Good day. It is a more time specific greeting and is equivalent to hello. Literally, good day means good day. As a rule of thumb, you can use good day only during the daytime, from morning until evening. During the evening, we say go aften. Go aften. Aften is Danish for evening, so go aften means good evening. Finally, in the mornings, we say go morgen. God morgen, which means good morning. Good day, go aften, and go morgen are used when we meet someone, but when we leave, we don't say these again. When parting ways for a long time, we usually say, Ha det godt. Ha det godt. Ha det godt means be well, but a better translation is all the best. Finally, in Danish, we have an expression meaning see you. Vi ses. Vi ses. Now you can greet people in many different ways in Danish. Let's review them all again. When meeting friends or someone we don't know, hi or good day. In the morning, go morgen. In the evening, go aften. When leaving for a long time, had a gut. When leaving and implying, see you soon, vi ses. It's easy, isn't it? Now it's time for Louise's insights. In formal situations, Danish people commonly greet each other by shaking hands. On the other hand, if we meet someone we are very friendly with, no matter their gender, it's common to give hugs. Don't be afraid to try it out with your Danish friends. During the next lesson, we learn the meaning of the phrase Taylor du engelsk. Do you already know it? I'll tell you all about it in the next Dansk på 3 minutter lesson. På gensyn! If you're tired of knowing and speaking the language at a basic level and want to express yourself fluently just like native speakers, then you'll need to learn grammar. The problem? It can be tricky to learn. But don't worry, in this guide you'll discover how to learn and master grammar with the Grammar Bank. 1. Where to get all of the grammar explanations you'll ever need. 2. The best way to learn grammar that's right for your level. And three, how to expose yourself to real examples until the rules become natural to you with a study tool called the Grammar Bank inside of our learning program. But first, if you don't yet have access to our program, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description. First, what is the Grammar Bank? The Grammar Bank is like a grammar dictionary, except online. It's a database of the must-know grammar rules and explanations that makes it easy to look up specific rules and learn them. Look for it in the top menu of our site. 2. How do you learn grammar with it? The best way to learn grammar is not to just study rules, but to learn in context and hear the grammar used in real life. And that's exactly how you learn with our lessons. You learn a quick conversation and hear how the grammar rules are used within that conversation. 3. What if you come across grammar that you're not familiar with? Or what if you want to review a specific rule without going back to redo a lesson? That's where the Grammar Bank comes in. You can look up grammar rules and get the explanations, examples, and links to lessons where we cover these rules. You can also sort grammar by learning level. So if you're an absolute beginner and want to make sure you know all of the absolute beginner grammar rules, you can do just that with the Grammar Bank. You can also sort the rules by spelling, category, and lesson series. And if you want to get used to the grammar patterns so that you can use them in conversation and become fluent, the best way is to expose yourself to examples as much as possible. Grammar is hard at first, but gets easy once you get used to it with enough exposure. 
be sure to access the related lessons inside the Grammar Bank and listen to the native conversations that use the rule as much as possible. So, if you want to become fluent and speak perfectly, you'll need grammar. Take advantage of the Grammar Bank inside of our learning program. But if you don't yet have access, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to sign up. Hi, jeg hedder Louise. Hi everybody, I'm Louise. Welcome to DanishClass101.com's Dansk for 3 minutter. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Danish. In the last lesson you learned the most common forms of greetings in Danish. Do you remember them? In this lesson you're going to learn a very useful phrase. Do you speak English? If you find yourself in a situation where you need assistance in English, this phrase can be a lifesaver. And because you're asking it in Danish, you will be sure that everyone will understand what you're saying, even if their answer is no. Here's the most common way to say it. Taler du engelsk? Taler du engelsk? Danish is a pretty straightforward language. We conjugate verbs based on time, which means we have the past, present and infinitive. The question, taler du engelsk, translates as, are you speaking English? In Danish present tense, speaking is taler. The second word in the sentence, du, simply means you. And you probably recognize engelsk to be English. Taler du engelsk. To learn how to probably conjugate verbs like taler, please check out our absolute beginner series on danishclass101.com. You can find very detailed grammar lessons and resources there. Like English, there are many ways to ask this question. Let's look at another one that is also pretty similar to English. It's literally the equivalent of Can you speak English? Can du tale engelsk? Can du tale engelsk? Adding undskyld, excuse me, to the sentence would make it Undskyld, kan du tale engelsk? Undskyld, kan du tale engelsk? The responses you will receive could be one of these three. Ja, yeah, meaning yes. Ja. Yeah. Lit, meaning a little. Lit. And nej, jeg kan ikke tale engelsk, meaning no, I don't speak English. Nej, jeg kan ikke tale engelsk. Since this last one is a negative statement, we need to say ikke before the verb tale. Notice also that the verb tale is slightly different than taler. Remember, the verb changes depending on the time it's in. We're now talking about the infinitive since it's coupled with can, which means can. Now it's time for Louise's insights. For those of you who don't just speak English, you can obviously use this question with any language you need. Danish people study other European languages at school, so maybe you will get lucky. Just substitute Engelsk with Italiensk for Italian, Fransk for French, Spansk for Spanish, Tysk for German. In this lesson we mentioned the expression Unskyld, but did you know that this could also be used as an apology? In the next lesson you will learn this and other ways to apologize in Danish. I'll see you in the next Dansk på 3 minutter lesson. På gensyn! Expand your vocabulary with our core 2000 words ebook. It's free and packed with essential expressions that you'll use on a daily basis. Start building your vocabulary today. Click the link in the description below to download your free Danish ebook before it's gone.